Hi, I'm Eris Wilson. I decided to do uh, question 5 for module 3 through video. I just found it more appropriate uh, this way since uh, it's new ideas in the education system and I think YouTube and Screencast-O-Matic and things like that need to be implemented. Uh, so I thought it just seemed appropriate to use this to answer my this format to answer question 5. So this is the perfect time for this module. Uh, this week, in my last in-service of the year, our school is going to be discussing redesign. The state of Kansas is wanting every school within the next five to ten years to do a complete redesign of their school and how they teach. Um, so <laughs> this is giving me a bunch of ideas and things that I can take back to my school and discuss. Um, and there's already been schools that have redesigned. Uh, I know of Lakin High School, uh, about seven miles from us, they uh, implemented the Apollo uh, format where they have three days, Monday, Tuesday, and Friday, where it's regular schedule, eight classes a day, about 55 minutes each. Then, uh, then on Wednesday and Thursday, they have block scheduling where it's four classes a day um, and they get about two hours in a class, which is kind of like our Tuesday and Thursday classes at Fort Hayes. Um, which I think helps prepare them for building that endurance because I know when I went to uh, college, those Tuesday and Thursday classes, if I didn't have block scheduling where I went to high school, those di those days would have been brutal. Um, but I don't really want the Apollo um, block scheduling. I don't think is the way to go. The traditional route isn't the way to go. But uh, so my ideal structure um, starts with the flexible scheduling, uh, which was mentioned in our book. For flexible scheduling where the students can go, instead of just saying you're going to go 13 years, so buckle up. If you want to get done in 10, go ahead. If you want to get done in 15, go ahead. It's up to you to decide. It's up to that student to decide. And I think a perfect format uh, for classes to implement this to help it is open class format where if one day you're just like man I just want to go to math I just want to stay in math or I want to stay in business or history or whatever what have you you can go to that class for that day you don't have to just go oh I was here for an hour so I can't come back no spend your whole day there this also allows students if they want to get their year of math done sooner within a year to maybe start a new math subject or a new history subject they can do it in a faster time. They don't have to be limited to a class structure. This allows teachers to teach the gifted students the way they should be taught. It shouldn't be where gifted students want to move on and then they just have to be said, oh, slow down because uh, these students need help. They need a, more time. I know you're moving fast, but you, you just need to wait. That, that shouldn't be how it is. It should be, great, let's move on. Let's go to the next thing. If you know how to do it, let's move on. Um, and it go, same goes for the other students that need help. If you need more time, if let's say you, you're going through geometry and you're just not getting it. Student might need a year and a half to finish, to understand, to understand the subject before moving on. This allows them to do that. Allows them to take that year and a half to get the math done instead of just trying to beat it in and then at the end of the year, well, they tried, so I'm just going to push them on and they don't understand the subject. I think that just steals education from a student just pushing them on oh they'll figure it out sometime they won't they won't but if we allow them to dictate their schedule to empower them to be motivated i think the open source just the open format just gives them motivation gives them self-power over their own lives when the traditional format it's just like you go to this you signed up for this class being in year you're just going to stick it out and even though you don't like it the hardest thing for me as a business teacher is students like, oh, I think I'm going to like business. And they get the business and they don't enjoy it. And then they, I have to sit there and see them just falling behind, not really caring. And they just wish they could go to art or something else. In an open, uh, open format, it's just, well, if you didn't like business yesterday, go try art. Go try history. Do something. Instead of like, oh, I have to go to this class and I'm going to sit here. I think the ideal thing for me is just allowing the students 
to be themselves, to experience new things. And also a great format is to allow them to use technology responsibly. If we never let them use the technology that is available to us, now they're going to be behind. VR is going to be the new form format for meetings in the future. Students need to know, know how to under to stand and how to learn and learn how to use it. If we just sit back and just let them fall behind, that's our fault. So I think implementing technologies that are available to us now. Every student has a computer in my in my class. They have a webcam. Why are they not making YouTube videos? Why are they not doing what we're doing right now? What I'm doing with you guys? Why are we not communicating? I mean, in my class, I could definitely use this where they could create their a miniature podcast over a news article and give their thoughts. How does it impact the world? What, how does it impact them? Be creative. Be be able to communicate through through talk. I mean, just orally, just because we have a lot of students that can't talk. I mean, I'm not really showing it right now, but I mean, it's just you need to have that skill. I know you guys, I've all had that student that if they could text it to you, you could talk to them all day. But when you stare them in the eye, in the eye they're looking over here. Yes, miss. Yes, I understand. Uh-huh. Get it. Yeah, it, it doesn't help. So I think implementing these technologies to learn how to talk doesn't want to, because when you're talking through this format, you're talking to the people you're that's viewing it. I'm not looking at myself when I do this. I'm looking straight in the camera like I'm talking to someone. This teaches them something. I think in an ideal world, in a, an ideal format of school, it's kind of like college. Where you go to your class, you, you learn something new, and you try to apply it the best way you know. If you, if you want to schedule your day where you have a class at 8 a.m. and your next class is at 3 p.m., but you take that time in the middle to experience or maybe do something like a big project in the school or socialize or uh, do something like a club, do that. I mean, I'm not telling them to go home. That's not what I'm saying. But like, let's say you want to go to math for the first two hours of the day and then the last two hours of the day is you want to go to history. In that middle time, you could... Be with uh, your student government body and planning something or doing a class meeting or getting together and play chess or play a game or socialize. But that's up to you. Now, and that that's where we learn the consequences of our choices. If you don't go to class, you might not get done in that the time frame that you want. The people that go to class every day and want to learn more and more and more really quick, they might be done faster. But that's up to them. We're, we're trying to fit everybody into the same square peg, but we have students that are circles, triangles, and just don't fit. So we need to open it up, open that square up larger, and let them fall through. Um, so that's my idea. Uh, I don't know if it's correct. I, don't, I mean, I've only been teaching for two years, and... I'm still learning every day. I'm not going to sit here and preach that I know everything. But if I was a student, that's what I'd want. Um, thank you for listening, and I look forward to reading your guys' posts. Bye.